Hi everybody, Martin here and welcome to this very last part of our architectural course. Today we will have a look at two finishing aspects of our model. First the ember and smoke simulations and second the actual rendering. I have my pedestal asset here as we left it off at the end of the last part with the fire and the lighting setup. Now let's just quickly hide our fire cube for now and also let's activate this shortcut view add-on that will allow you to see all the keys I'm using. I know, I know, I should have used this one way earlier. The screencast add-on was not working for me in the 2.8 version and I thought there was no substitute. Uh, turns out I was wrong. Well, better late than never. And I promise you next time I shall be always using this tool. Well, uh, we will first start with some base shape for our particle simulation of the embers. Uh, create a simple plane, move it roughly at the position of the coal and scale it to about this size. Also, don't forget to name it to something like embers. And let's actually make it a little smaller. Now to add a particle system, go to this tab here and just click on this new button. We already talked about particle systems in the fourth part of the tutorial. So if you're unsure about it, you can rewatch that one. Name the particle settings here to Ember Particles. And now let's start setting these up. As in previous parts, I already figured out some settings that I like so that we don't have to waste time. So start with setting this lifetime randomness to 0.2. Also go to this velocity tab and set the randomize option to 0.15. It will make the particles emit a bit more chaotically. To make them rise up, set the Z velocity to 0.1. We can play the particle simulation now. So let's add a new window down here and switch it to timeline. When you now click on play, you can see that it's not really what we want. But that's just because we have gravity influencing the particle simulation. So to change that, scroll down here and in the field weights tab, lower the gravity settings to zero. All right, good. That's actually pretty close to what I want. To randomize the rising movement of the embers, you can set this Brownian option to two and let's see what it does. Yep, it makes the particles disperse a bit more. Now let's actually not use these default particles, but make our own embers. For that, you can just add a new object to the scene. This time use a UV sphere and immediately after you create it, hit F6 to adjust its attributes. Here, lower the number of segments to eight. Our particles will be very small, so we don't need that much detail for them. Now push the sphere to the side, it's very large but it doesn't really matter. We will adjust the size of the particles in the particle settings. To test render our object quickly, just hit Ctrl B and drag out a region that you want rendered. Then in the shader tab, create a new material for the sphere and make it an emission material. Give it an orange color and leave the emission strength at something like one. Hit preview render button down here and see how it looks. Uh, yep, a bright orange, Thing. That's what we want. Now go back to your embers plane and in the particle settings scroll to render tab and here instead of halo set the render parameter to object. Then a bit lower in the object tab section that appears define your shape in our case find the sphere. You can even type the name in. Now when you hit play you can see that the plane now emits our little UV spheres. However let's keep adjusting this. First off, there is quite a few of them, so lower the number here to something like 500. Also, in the render tab, lower the scale of the embers significantly. I am using 0.02. By the way, I've never mentioned this, but I'm using meters as my default metric system. To not have the embers all uniform, you can raise the randomness to 0.5. Now, let's see. It's a bit hard to see, but our particles are much smaller now, which is good because I don't want these to be dominant at all. On the contrary, I want the effect to be quite subtle. The emission behavior, however, doesn't work for me yet. So let's keep adjusting. First, maybe make the embers a bit bigger after all, and also lower their mass so that they appear lighter in their movement.
Let's have a look how they appear in the render. And yeah, I think this is quite fine. One small tip, in the new versions of Blender 2.8, you can now scroll down here to the viewport settings of our particles and disable the emitter in your viewport. If you now play the simulation again, the plane is gone, but the embers keep emitting. I still think that the movement is a bit too fast, so maybe instead of using this normal velocity force to propel the particles upwards, we'll rather try some custom force fields. So what happens here when we set the normal to zero is that the embers actually don't rise up that high. We want for them to rise higher, but not in that uniform fashion as previously. So let's add a new force by creating this force field wind. Move it up so that it sits on the coals and then set its settings in the physics tab with the strength at 0.7, flow at 1, noise amount to 0.5. Also let's set the C to 75, but it's not really necessary. It just creates different variation of your force field settings. Now when we hit play again, it's not really that visible, but you'll be able to see that the particles move up a lot faster, but not as fast as with the normal velocity set to 1. To make the particle movement even more random, let's add a new force field called turbulence. Again, put this one in the area of the coals, set its size to 1, you can leave the strength at 1, and then play your animation. To be able to see it better, let's just make our particles bigger, back in the ember plane particle settings. And yeah, I think this works for me. So make the particle smaller again and call it done. Before starting working on the smoke, let's actually take some time to rename the objects we created for the embers. As I've already mentioned with the special object like fields, I normally put the name of the object type first, then I define the details. Like here, I name it field and then underscore wind and turbulence. Let's start this one with a cube because we actually need to define space called a domain where our physics simulation will take place. For that, let's scale this object slightly higher than our fire cube because the smoke will rise above it. We can make it go slightly out of frame like this. Then with the cube selected in the physics tab, click on the smoke button and define it as domain. Any smoke simulation that we'll create inside this domain will take effect and also it will use the material that we assigned to this cube. So let's create one now. Since 2.8 we can actually use this optimized principled volume shader that puts together the attributes of volume scatter and volume absorption from previous versions. So let's definitely use that one. And right away connect this volume socket instead of to the surface, rather to the volume of the material output. Also set its density to 0.2. Now to actually have a simulation inside, create a new mesh, for example this torus, because we haven't used that one before. Scale it and place it like I do, and then again click on this smoke button in physics tab, but this time let's assign a flow attribute to it. Here you don't have to change much, just lower the surface to about 1 and make the smoke color darker. When you now play the animation, we can already see that we have something here rising from the bowel. To be able to see the smoke better, Let's hide the pedestal and let's actually hide the torus as well because the simulation inside our cube will remain visible even if we do so. Cool, we have some smoke rising from the fire but it's still too visible so make the color here inside the volume shader darker. And I think that's it. This effect is actually barely visible you can of course make it more apparent by making the color lighter and the density higher, but I actually want it to be only apparent in motion. By hitting F12 I activated a test render and at the end of it I actually realized I haven't activated my fire shader. So let's click on the render icon here and now hit F12 again. Our sparks seem to be rendering fine as well as our fire but there's a bit of a problem, our smoke is missing. 
Well, what I learned is that before you actually render your smoke simulation, you need to do two things. You can see me setting up a dissolve option. That's not that first thing I was going to mention, but it's a nice option that makes your smoke disappear after some time. I found that the value of 30 works good in this case. However, the first thing to make your smoke render is to go down here into your cube physics settings and into the cache tab. Here, bake the simulation so that it actually doesn't have to constantly compute it. Instead, it will be saved in the file and work basically as an animation. You can give it more time to simulate, like 450 frames, and then hit bake. Wait a while until your computer finishes the computation and saves the data. After that, when you hit the play button, you'll see that it's now much smoother and faster. The second thing you need to do is save your project. So go ahead and hit that Control S. With that, you can give F12 another try. And this time you can see that even though it's barely visible, which as I've mentioned is my goal, the smoke is here. If you want it more visible, you can go ahead and raise the density in the shader to something like 2 and maybe even make it darker. One small note, you can bake your particle simulation as well by going to settings, increasing the endpoint to 450 frames and then hitting bake. Usually when you're happy with your simulation, be it particle or physics one, you do well to bake these because then your scene will be much faster to work with. Well, well, last chapter of the last part of our tutorial. Uh, let's quickly set up some actual rendering settings here to make the render better looking and hopefully faster. So first off, let's set a GPU computing here because these shader operations tend to work better with it. You can set the render sampling number to something like uh, 256 and then also set the color management mode to filmic, though I actually find it useful mostly when rendering environments, not so much with these single objects. Anyway, it never hurts. Also in this fourth tab from the top, which is called view layer, you can activate your denoising tool. I have actually downloaded this awesome free AI denoiser tool called Denoise by Remington Graphics, uh, which you surely know. Its author Grant Wilk has done a tremendous job on this one, so definitely use it. It works with 2.8 as well. Or you can simply use this old denoiser built into Blender. It will do the job as well, though definitely not so cool as having AI do your denoising. After that, here in this performance tab, you increase the size of your rendering tiles to about 512 in X and Y. Bigger tiles work better when you have GPU rendering active. Uh, with CPU, it's the other way around. And that's really it. Now just hit Ctrl B again, set your render region to the whole screen and hit F12 to do a test render. If in the end you want to render out your animation, you just need to specify an output path here, find your folder, create a special rendering folder here, name your render and click accept. You can leave everything else as it is, which means mostly the PNG format. We won't be going any deeper here, that I will leave for some other tutorials in the future, where I'll be focusing solely on rendering and compositing. For now, let's just not forget to increase this percentage here to 100, and depending on your desired format, you can change the frame rate here. Also, you can change which part of your timeline to render, so let's put about 200 here, so that we render only the portion where the smoke is already developed. And that's it! Now all you need to do is hit render animation here, and then put together the image sequence in your favorite video editing software. And with that, my friends, you have reached the end of this tutorial series. I can't wait to see some of your renders or to hear from you. If you have comments, criticism, or even questions about some things you got stuck at, just send me a message and I'll help you. I'm really glad you decided to finish this series and that maybe you even subscribe to this channel, because there will be more, of course. If you didn't know, I'm making a short film set in ancient Greece, full of cool hoplites, ancient armies, and blender awesomeness, so any help from you means I can do less freelance stuff and more of this project, 
and more tutorials about it. Speaking of which, I'm trying something new to be able to run the project better. So I created my very own Patreon profile where you can subscribe and support it. You can find project files for my tutorials there and based on your tier you will get free stuff, high res renders, plus I'll post some more behind the scenes stuff and videos, dissecting my 3D renders, texturing projects and paintings. Also there's already a poll there where you can influence which courses and tutorials I should do next. So if you're interested and find this Heroes of Bronze project with its tutorials valuable, you can head there and support it. And all the links are of course in the description of this video. Phew, that was a long outro. However, with that, this plug is over and I wish you all the best. Hope to hear from you and until next time, Martin out.